Hi, I'm Juan Rivera. I've had over 20 years of residential and commercial construction experience. I've traveled the world and lived around the US. Over the years, I've seen and completed many projects, projects both small and large. I'm the owner of Renaissance Development Group Inc., a full service construction company, and I know remodeling. Each week, I'll bring you the tips, tricks, and trends of home remodeling and improvement. We'll talk to local contractors and industry experts about the latest new trends for your home and remodeling projects. We'll show you the ins and the outs to make your project easier. So join us for the next 30 minutes on Remodeling Now. Hi, thanks for joining us on another episode of Remodeling Now. I'm Ron, your host. And I'm Daryl. How you doing, bud? Good, how you doing? Great. On today's show, Daryl and I are going to be showing you folks how to make a mantle. So stay tuned after a word from our sponsors. Welcome back. Now, Daryl, before the break, we talked about we're going to make a mantle today. Yeah, we're going to make a mantle. We went down to our local home improvement store and we picked up just some basic pine. Uh, you can use really any kind of wood you want, um, whatever your preference is, but we're using this. It's a paint grade and we're going to put together a mantle. It's going to be simple yet elegant and pretty inexpensive to do. And that's the beauty again of what we try to show on this show to our viewers about being able to take and letting you take your labor with the cost of material only and making something that you can use for your house and have fun and enjoy it. Now you talked about different materials. Today we're using the pine and they can use oak, aspen, a variety of other things. They can use anything they want. You know, again, whatever their preference is. If they want paint grade, they can use paint grade. They can use a stain grade. Um, and they want to just do a clear grade, whatever they want. Right. So paint grade, you always want to use a clear, uh, you know, you can use anything for a uh, paint grade. Yes. For stain grade, you want to use a clear wood, so you don't have very many knots or, or um, imperfections like we have here on this pine because we can put bondo or whatever we want on that to make it look good yeah we can fill anything like that in before we paint it but anything other than that you want to have it you know is exactly. not free and as smooth as possible that's the beauty of being able to build a mantle and make it look really ornate and you can do it by these little things that we call filigree pieces these are pieces that we're going to stick in the corner this is the piece that we're going to stick in the center and of course we're going to show you guys how to center it up and how to make different things and put them in different spots and it's really amazing what it looks like whenever we get these things done. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, you put something just as simple as, as a little piece of dressed out wood, ornate piece of wood like this, and it totally transforms yeah. the face of the, it, of the it, mantle. It does. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. That sounds great. All right, good. Daryl, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and put our columns together. So let's, once you start them down okay. there, and we will show our viewers what we're looking at doing. We're gonna take our two one by fours, and we're gonna stand them on edge, and we're basically gonna take a one by six, and we're gonna, put it on top and that's basically going to give us what our columns look like as far as that's concerned. So Daryl, I'm going to go ahead and mark everything and if you'll cut it, then we'll be able to assemble it once you get it cut. Sounds great. So I'm going to go ahead and mark 52 inches here. Okay Daryl, I've got all these 1x4s marked as well all at right. 52 inches finished. So I'll stack these up for you. Okay, at this point, Daryl, now that we've got everything cut, we need to go ahead and glue it and then brad it, and we're using uh, two-inch nails, I believe. Yeah, two-inch finished nails and a pneumatic gun. Okay, so let's go ahead and roll this up here. Let's go ahead and get this glued. Okay, now we put a fair amount of glue in here, and it's probably going to spit out a little bit, but we don't really too much worry about that because we'd really prefer to have too much glue than not enough glue. So what we want to do is we want to get this and get it lined up at the end and on the sides, and then I'm gonna go ahead and nail one nail in it. And then we're going to work it back and forth as we go down, and put nails in it to hold it in place. Now we're gonna do the same thing with our second one. And the end's good. All right. And then essentially, we've got one column complete. Now, we will come back in a minute and as you roll this over, this kind of spreads, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a filler block in here to keep these together, and we'll show you what we're gonna do with that in just a minute. Yep. 
Okay, good. And so we're going to go to our next step. All right, Daryl, now that we've got our two combs complete and we've got them wiped down from the excess glue, we need to put our cleats in the back. Yeah, we got to flip them over and uh, get our cleats in there so that we don't have any spreading on these. Exactly. Now, what I did was I took a measurement from inside to inside on the face because it doesn't spread because it's already exactly. nailed, and those are the blocks that I've got. So we want to put one each end, one, one in the one middle, middle, and one each end down there. Essentially, what we're doing now is we're closing this gap and we're nailing where these go. And we have squeezed it together, so now it'll be square, and that holds this square like that. We're gonna do the same thing here again. Inside here, no. And this just basically, again, squares up the columns so it doesn't spread. So whenever you take and get ready to put it on your wall, that way you have a square product that you're working with. All you have to do is take and uh, line your wall up on, uh, on a wall, put with your uh, level or whatever the case may be, put your column edge out there, nail it off, and it'll be nice and straight for you. All right, so one now that we've got our, our columns put together, okay. we're going to uh, do a two-inch back set here for our freeze board to go across the face so that we have some more detail with our crown work when it goes on. We're going to have where it's going to step out and then step back in and leave, leave a nice detail work on our crown when it comes across the face up underneath our uh, mantelpiece. Okay, and you use a term called back set, and that's something we want to tell our uh, viewers about. Back set means you're stepping something back, which is going to create a detail, like you just said, in order to have, rather than having a straight shot of crown, it's going to go down, turn, do a 90 degree angle in this case, and then go back at another 90 degree angle, giving you that corner and making it look really sharp, especially on something small like this. Exactly. It just adds another feature to the fireplace. And again, simple, but yet gives it a little more elegance. Great. So what are we going to do here? All right. So what we're doing here is, is we're measuring back two inches. And we've already done here. We're going to do two lines. And then the length of our board, or the width of our board for our freeze is 11 and a quarter. So we're going to come down 11 and a quarter on this. And then we draw our lines on it. Okay, and this one's already complete. You're just checking to make sure yes. it's correct. And you're just going to duplicate that on the other side. So everything's good on this. And so then we're okay. going to do the same thing on here. Very good. All right, so we've got a piece of uh, one by two here that we're going to use. We're going to cut it down to 11 and a quarter for our cleating here to mount our freeze to. And this can be any stock laying It around. can, anything that you have laying around, you know, as long as it's wider than where your back set goes, right. so you're good. Okay. So I'm going to cut these down. Okay. We go one, we've got our okay. cleats now. Very good, now let's get the glue. Make sure we can glue these. And then we'll get the gun here and nail them off. So we stick them on, line them up, and make sure that we have everything in place. And make sure we have a good line in the front over here. That way you can see right here, we've taken a line that we already had. We've lined the, the, um, our cleat to it, and it's the same reveal all the way down. Then we come back and we just nail it off. And then we'll repeat that same process on the next one. All right, Daryl, now that we've got our columns done and we've got our cleats on here, which we've done on both of them, yep. both of these are identical, uh, the same, height, width, and with cleats. This is the board we're putting on. This is referred to as a freeze. Yes, this is one I'm going to have to cut down. I'm going to cut this to 48 inches, and it's going to fit between column to column, and that's going to be our freeze, and then from there, we'll build off of that. All right, very good. So I'm going to grab my pencil here, and we'll come over here and uh, cut this. Measure that at 48 inches. We'll get our speed square. Measure this on each side and mark it. And now you're ready to cut it. Okay. All right. So now that we've got our piece cut, we take a side of the column each. And then we lift this up. And then we take and we put this in here. And then we nail this into here just like this. Correct? Yeah, that gives us our freeze board. All right. So okay, as so always, we need to use some glue on this. Besides the nails, the glue actually holds a lot better than the nails do. 
All right, Juan, you want to pass that side to me? There's your part there. There you go, flush at the top. We're good. And we're going to repeat the process over here. Okay, ready? It's us right there. Sorry about that. Okay, we're good. Ready? Yep. Very good. All right, on to the next step. Likewise, whenever you have your two columns on, we put our freeze on, the side columns can spread out. So we need to lock that in place as we finish the rest of it so we don't build anything out square. So we've got a, uh, an old piece of wood laying around, leftover piece of trim that we're going to use to do that, and this is how we're going to do it. So Darren, why don't you go ahead and uh, hold it over there. He's going to hold that in flush, and I'm going to come to this end, and I'm Good. going to just mark it right here on the end, and then we're going to cut that, and then we'll nail that to the bottom, and then that way the bottom legs will not flare any, and we'll be square and true all the way around. Now, Daryl, you finished cutting this, so you got to cut the length? we got to cut the length. Okay, so now what we'll do, Daryl's going to hold that in down there flush to the outside. And I'm going to go ahead and give him the nail gun. He's going to put his, nail his off first. And then I'm going to take, see how we're already, it's coming in a little bit. We're out of, we're out of square. So I'm going to take and push my end out a little bit to where I'm flush on the end. And then I'm going to nail it there, and nail it there, and now our bottoms are the same as our top. At this point, Darren already put the cap on, on the mantle. So he's already got everything pre-glued, and now we're going to go ahead and nail the mantle cap on. Okay, you good to go? Yep, good to go over here. Now, let me get a couple nails in the front here as well. Okay. All right, we're good over here. All right, so now we're good to go here. That's it. Nail that there. Nail that there. I always want to make sure you put enough nails to make sure that it's held in place. Okay. Now, we have to nail our centerpiece in. So we nail, we're nailing that last because we want to make sure that it doesn't have any curves or whatever. So Dara's going to take a measuring tape and measure from one end to the other to make sure as we nail it down that we have the same reveal all the way down. That's pretty good. That's good right there. Okay. And that was a good shot. Come on down here again, right here. We're good. So now we've got a couple of nails there. We're going to put one more down here. Should be good to go right about there. Mm -hmm. All right, now at this point, we're going to be installing our crown. And uh, what we have here is we have a piece of uh, three and a quarter crown. And where this is going to be installed is we're going to take this and it's going to come underneath here like this. It's going to make a nice look. And it's also going to give some support to the top of our mantle also. So what are you going to get for us, Juan? What are you going to be using? Well, while Daryl's installing the crown, I'm going to go ahead and put a little piece of trim mold on the outside, and this is the profile this looks like. And what I'm going to be doing is taking this profile, and I'm going to be cutting it, and I'm going to be installing it on the outside here, and this is going to go all the way around the outside of our mantle uh, as far as the trim goes there. And then once we've got those two done, we have another mantle piece trim that's going to go here, and then we've got our two bottoms, and we'll get right to those and show you as soon as we get these complete. So let's go ahead. So we're going to come over here, we're going to take a measurement on our centerpiece, and we've got 48 and a, and a strong 16th. All right, we're going to try this. Perfect fit. Okay, now remember on this right here, when you're putting your nails in in here, you gotta remember you're only dealing with three quarter inch stock. So you, either you need to use a shorter nail or use a brad gun when applying your crown. Uh, otherwise, if you shoot the nail a little too straight, you don't get enough of an angle on it, 
it's going to blow through and shoot through the top. So you need to be careful when you're doing that. Okay, now we're going to install our returns. We're going to glue them and we're going to switch over to a brad gun this time. This only has a one inch nail in it because these pieces are so small that if you use a regular two inch finish nail on this, you're liable to split it here or here in your nailing. We're going to glue the joint on the inside and then install it. And again, be liberal with the glue. Uh, you can sponge it out, rinse it out but this is going to be your holding power right here. Right. Get it in there and match up your bottom. And one brad there. And one straight up and that's all you need for that. And we're going to let that glue set a little bit before we wash it out so it starts to penetrate and get good and hard. Okay. Alright, so what we've done is we fit this piece to it. We've got our returns that we installed. I've cut our miter on here and I'm fitting it to that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the outside of the column here and just put a pencil mark on the back of our crown. Okay, so we've got that now. That fits good. We're going to repeat that process. We're going to glue our butt joints or I should say our miter joints. And again, liberal with the glue. You can wipe it off. We've got that. And we're going to go with our brad gun. Now on this, you want to pin your top first. That's where you're getting your tension from. And then you can come down to your bottom, pin that. And normally what I like to do is just to shoot one right through on your corner there. And one through on that miter. That's going to also keep that miter while the glue's drying from moving. And we'll hit that with a sponge in a minute. We're going to repeat the process on the other side. It's okay to let the glue set for a while, but if you let it set too long, it gets to a point where you're not going to be able to wash it off. And especially in where you have your joints, it's going to be real tough to get out or you're not going to even be able to get it sanded out. So you let it tack up a little bit, but you're best to get it before it starts to get real firm. All we have left for our crown is to do our two returns, which when I say a return, it's going to be coming back from here and flush to the back of our column right here. So we're going to get our measurements on that right now and install those. Okay, you can see we've got our two returns cut. And what we'll do now is we'll hold it up there against our piece that's already been marked, installed, and we'll get a mark on it. Same process that we did to get these marks right here. through the face on this one. Okay. We'll let that glue set up a little bit and we'll install the other one. Okay, and that completes our crown. Well, Daryl, I see you got the crown pretty much taken care of here. Yeah, that's all installed all the way around. Okay, so I guess I better get hurry up and get caught up and, and do my part. You gotta get that done so I can do my bottom. Let me get going. All right. Now with mine, mine's a lot simpler than what Daryl had to do. I've basically got three, four cuts to make. So mine's a lot easier. I'm gonna take and measure across here on the face and my measurement is 71 and 3 16 and then I am nine and a quarter on each end. So I'll get mine done a whole lot quicker than Daryl got his. Okay, and I'll work with you. Okay. Nice. Now we want to go about every six inches and put a nail, making sure that we are flush across the top. Okay, now that we got that done, let's go ahead and take care of our ends. Oh, I got it, right here. I got it here. If for some reason this is not a perfect 90 degree angle, the glue gets in between 
and allows it to bind. See how it oozes out? So that way, if there's anything in it, as far as a gap is concerned, that'll be able to cover all that and make it look really nice. Okay, Perfect. Good. All right, so now what we're gonna do down at the bottom here is we're gonna come up with a one by 12, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna give it some depth. Uh, we're gonna wrap it with a one by 12, and then we're gonna take the same band molding that we put up on our top up here, and we're gonna wrap that around the top. Okay, now with this part, we've already got these put together, same way we did the columns. Now we're gonna stick them on, slide them on, and they should fit in just fine. Very good. Okay, and then what we do is they're on. We're just gonna nail the faces of them off. And then now with this trim, we're gonna put our trim pieces on, same way, but this time we're gonna nail them with a brad nailer. Voila, done. Okay. Now second to the last thing that we need to trim out is our banding that goes right above here. So we're just gonna slip that in place and brad it in and that just gives it a nice detail look at that point. And then we've got our small little piece that goes here. Okay. And that finishes that out on this side. Now we'll come over here and finish this side. The last part of our fireplace is the little filigree pieces that we have talked to you about. You know, this is the really the finishing touches that really make it look good. Just, yeah, something small like this, it just totally makes the whole face of that just jump. That's it. So grab the gun. All right. Okay. And at the weight, right, right there. All right, get one in the center. All right, and that takes care of that. Now, again, the same thing. Here, you, this one's a little more, you know, elaborate, so it's a little bit longer. You want to put a little bit more glue on this one especially on the, the tails, as I call them, and make sure that you've got that. So we'll put just a hair more on this one. And again, on this, we have already pre-fitted this to make sure we had it exactly where we want it. Push it in the center, push it in the center. There you go, go ahead and nail that. So that pretty much wraps it up. It looks great, it looks real good. It looks real good. I'm real happy that we were able to get this completed and that we were able to show our viewers uh, what they can make at home with a little bit of spare time. This project takes about two hours to do. Yeah, about two hours. Okay, and the cost on it is about $100 of material if you went with what we did here. Well, Daryl, thanks a lot. Excellent, thank you. It was you, a Juan. great show. We hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next episode of Remodeling Now.